ladies and gentlemen, welcome. 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 You're back. Esports report presented by the Xbox One, the official console emoji. I am back, Jack. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it have is. fun at the X Games. It was good. It was good. I heard you had a, an interesting weekend, but you made it here nice and safe. How's the phone doing? Cracked. Oh, all right. Yeah. How much did that cost uh, to get fixed? Like two hundred dollars to get it fixed. Oh, no, less case openings for you, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen. Don't tweet and walk, <laughs> especially around a Formula One circuit. Multitasking is hard. There, it's, no. All right. Let me explain. Oh okay. God, let me go. let me give you some context before we get into today's show. Around a Formula One track, yeah. some people may know the the like r the corner of the apexes are sometimes like rough. Like one, there'll be like a maybe like a two foot by two foot square raised, yeah. and then one lower, and then raised and lower for for like kind of grip when you go around the corner in case you you do go a little bit too far. I was tweeting, and. I didn't expect it to be raised where I was, mm -hmm. and I kind of went over on my ankle, which really hurt, by the way, mm -hmm. and is kind of swollen. Sorry to hear that. I know you're all really concerned, so I yeah. just yeah, yeah. now. And my phone goes flying, and Maven, oh don't worry, I was with Maven, though. I was with Maven, my good, trusty friend Maven, who in times of need always comes through, and he came through by laughing hysterically and tweeting about it. Wouldn't you have laughed at him though if he fell on, I on the I was like, Maeve, you okay? Like, yeah. Maven's, okay. Maven's old, man. He could have like thrown out his he's, hip. He's a little braille. Like, I could have been calling braille. 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 Yeah. braille. I said braille. He's, he's a little braille. He's a little, he's a little, a little braille. Right. Anyway, that was a really bad joke. That was bad. That I, was I feel really bad. bad. I'm yeah. Sorry, everyone. Anyway, <laughs> today's show. Every time I clap, by the way, my thing goes off. That was really annoying. Uh, but today's show X Games full recap of yeah. everything that went on. Uh, myself and Jack are going to go through each team's individual placement, talk about who played well. Who pooped the bed? Because believe me, there was a couple of players that did. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to take a look and talk over a couple of games as well from the X Games. Then, more excitingly, Black Ops, Black Ops 2 Throwback Tournament hype starts today. And what would be a Black Ops 2 Throwback if we didn't bring Revan in? Revan's going to be here at 6 p.m. Oh, gosh. Eastern as well. I can't wait. Making his return to Black Ops 2 casting. I wanted to do like an AW show match, but he was like, ah, I don't want to do it. Yeah, he's still got some classes to take. So a lot of hype around that one. Yesterday, we looked at the best games of the yeah, X you Games. Yeah, you guys did a show we, yesterday. Yeah, we really broke down just kind of the best overall matches. We okay. were very short-staffed, so we just still want to have a show. A lot of people tuned in more excited about it. We also did the full announcement of the Black Ops 2 tournament that's going on, that $5,000 tournament happening all week long. We also announced the rosters at the end of the show, yes. too. So we'll be going over all that today. So if you missed any of that, don't worry. Be sure to stay tuned throughout the show. We got you. We for got a you. full in-depth recap it's, of what went down. It's going to be insane. And then, of course, at 7 p.m., the Black Ops 2 tournament starts. Yeah. And it's going to be Puckett and Revan bringing you this evening's action. And as well, as if today's show Wasn't couldn't good enough. get any better, we are giving away an Xbox One. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, only a small thing, an entire yeah, game console. It's just, you know, no, no big hundreds deal. and hundreds of hours of entertainment. No, no big deal. No big deal. So maybe, right. maybe you're watching the show right now, and maybe you play a lot on 360, and you've been thinking about making that transition. This is your chance. Right. Maybe Stay you tuned. even have an Xbox One already, and you're like, hey, you know what I really need for my bathroom? Another, Another Xbox, Xbox One. One. Who I doesn't want to poop and play Call of Duty at the same time? I feel like you've done that from experience. You have to go in depth. I'm a well-rounded <laughs> individual. Um, so absolutely. So a lot, a lot of good things to look forward to. Also, if you're wondering who's going to be playing tonight, what are the pools going to be? We will cover all of that in we today's show as you. well. We got everything handled, baby. Don't even worry about it. Hashtag we, we back. Hashtag we, well, you were already here. I was here. You, I'm back. You're back. So hashtag I'm back. Hashtag Whatever. you were here anyway. Whatever. It's a salty, salty topic. As you can tell. Are the groups announced? Yeah, we just said. Don't worry. Later today. I know you're a little bit behind, but you'll Ever, see. Everyone, everyone out here being really excited. I know. Everyone just wants really to Really excited. Know. We need to figure out how we're going to give away the Xbox One, though. Because I know Puggy's going to come on the show a little bit later on. I think you guys are doing the giveaway a little bit later. I don't think I'll be here for it, so that's that's something for you to handle. We'll, we'll, give, we'll make sure we have a... You know what we'll do? We'll make sure we have an eSports report that's presented by the Xbox where you get to give it away. Thanks, Ben. Yeah? I'm going to hold you to that. Because now, if you don't... You're going to be upset. Yeah. I'll have to buy you an Xbox One for you to give away. Now much. Yeah, exactly. Just exactly. Case. Anyway, let's start the show. It. X Games recap. Full recap, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be pretty awesome. If you miss the X Games, it's going to be useful for you. If you're at the X Games, we're going to break down a lot of teams' poor results or also good results. Absolutely. And inform you with you know who really did perform well. Uh, we're going to start off with TCM Gaming. Uh, TCM with a pretty abysmal event. Let's be honest. Ultimately yeah. walked out with the seventh, eighth placement. Now. Going into the X Games, we kind of painted that storyline that this is a European team who just moved over to North America, you know, trying to prove everyone that they can play. I didn't have them placing well. 
in the actual season. I didn't even have them at X. Did you have them in X Games? I had them attending X Games, but I honestly didn't think they would even have the seed they had. Really? Which surprised a lot of people getting up to that fifth seed. Unfortunately, though, nothing really paid off uh, when the event started. Right. Two and eight map count, 0 and two record. So that whole season, all those matches they played came down to two series in which they went two and eight overall. That's frustrating to say the least. Yeah, it was pretty bad weekend for the Euros abroad. It's like, how else do you break that down? It was just, it was the worst result they could have had because, as you mentioned time and time again, right, everything was on the line for them. And it, it was big for Europe as well because you know you, all the European fan bases sat there yep. saying, "Hey, you know, finally a European team can hang with the North Americans. All right, how are they going to play when it gets to the championship? Because don't get me wrong, it's all great and well playing well in the season. Yeah, but it's like, yay, I did really well in the season and didn't play well in the in the finals. And then how how often can we still reference now? You know, TCM did so well at Anaheim of last year. Like, how, it gets a little and, old. And now, can we have another event where the Europeans really come over and step up and go absolutely huge? I mean, yes, we're seeing, honestly, we're seeing more competition mm -hmm. between European players and North American players more than ever before. I think that's safe to say yeah, in I regards to the amount of uh, Gfinity events that are going right, on, right, the right. more opportunities for them to travel over here. So now you expect it hopefully to happen a little bit more often because... Mm -hmm. Uh, honestly, I think but, uh, we're, we're seeing more and more. Even now, Epsilon bringing over this squad, even though it is only one European player. It's but 20. They, they, they technically now have two teams. So it, it, it's it's tough. The Europeans need something. They need it bad. They I need mean, someone to step up. The Europeans now have the European Pro League as well, which, which is, is good. Be, that's good. I mean, that, that helps really sort of yeah. build competition. Um, but we'll see kind of what teams emerge from that because hopefully there will be a couple that maybe make the trip over to North America and some North America. Of course, Worlds was announced as well. We didn't oh, even I expect that. to see it. I definitely expect well, to I see it. I mean, Worlds is going to be an insane event. Oh. Um, I mean, you, well, let me let me quickly ask. You were on yesterday's show. We did the full announcement of it. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on it? How, how pumped are you for it? It's, it's looking good. New Orleans. Dude, I, I can't wait. First of all, New Orleans. Pumped for that. I've driven through it. Never actually uh, been there. Yeah. So it's going to be my first time there. Well, let me break it down really quick for you. Uh -huh. From what we heard, the Atlanta Falcons play the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans the Thursday that everyone arrives. So the city serious? is going to be absolutely packed and nuts. Yo, should we get then, tickets? Uh, I mean, I'm down if, Yo, if I'm go? out there. Then it's, uh, it's middle October, so when it starts getting a little bit cool up here, it's still going to be beautiful down in Louisiana. Absolutely gorgeous weather. See, you're all about the weather. I don't care about the weather. See, right? the weather's nice. I mean, well, it's because when you go, you, you get sunburned in Austin. Dude, like I actually that. didn't do too bad. All right. if you, yeah. if you, like, you, you got out unscathed. You did okay. Uh, I, did, I, did, I did nice. Day one was a little rough. I looked like a lobster, but day yeah. two, I recovered quite nicely. There you go. But in, in terms of the final day in the New Orleans Theater, that's, that's going to be nuts. We did a whole virtual tour yesterday. The chat was couldn't believe that what they were seeing. It's, it, I, it's I don't insane. think people realize how great this is. And it's insane. Adam tweeted, anybody can win this event because seeding is purely based off pro points. So, so, so much on the line. You're like, yo. Massive open event. Me, me, and, my, me and my boys want to go play. Come play. Hundreds it's going to be a great, great thousand dollars. We just completely diverged away from it. I know, but I just want to hear your thoughts on yeah, it. I, I'm good. so excited. I, I, have, I have one suggestion. Yeah. Adam, if you're watching the show, which sometimes I know you do, I DM'd at you and you didn't reply because that's how good my idea was. I want to see when you walk into the theater on Sunday. Yeah. Every single seat has two things. All number right. one, oh, God. a pair of boomsticks. I knew, I knew you were going to mention those. And number two, <laughs> was that a horse? Some form of, no, no, well, that's, <laughs> I know. yeah, shut up. Number two, some form of like glow sticky kind of thing. So it like lights up? So that lights up. Because from my experiences in DreamHack, DreamHack do this a lot. Um, watching the CSGO final in Sweden between yeah. NIP and Fnatic like, a couple of years ago. Everyone had boomsticks. I've never heard an atmosphere like it. And it gets everyone going. And then I also remember the photos, too, where they had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they had everyone take out their phones and put their and flashlight on so it yep. looked like the crowd like the crowd was massive. It was cool. It was insane. You get chills looking at it. it it's Hoping awesome. for that. It's going to be a huge for the world championship. spectator. Huge, huge amount of spectator passes. Of course, they have more information on that a little bit later. But back to TCM. Back to the X Games recap. Sorry, we TCM pooped the bed. They went 0-2 as a record and 2-8 on Madcan. Now we actually have some stats. Let's uh, take a look at some hardpoint statistics, because hardpoint was a, a game type where they were playing pretty decent at throughout the season. Uh, they were one and two in hardpoint, score difference of around about plus 32 points. Team KD though, 1.03. So they were holding their own, and may, I'll, I'll be I'll be real with you. Majority of that 1.03 comes single-handedly from Mad Cat and his performances this weekend. Yes. He had a game where he went 47 and 19. Yeah, 47 and 19. CTF, surprisingly, uh, another one that went positive at one and one. Yeah. Uh, score difference just plus one caps. Team KD at 1.12, so you can see they kind of played a little bit better there. But it was S&D and Uplink where they just couldn't, Uplink, just couldn't really? win. I mean, well, hold on, S&D, Team KD was 0.68. That is absolutely atrocious. 
And I'm, they were I'm, losing by three and a half rounds. That's got to be close to the worst this weekend. I think Envy was the uh, other one that was close. We'll, we'll take a look at their stats in a bit here. But yeah, a, horrible. An uplink too, zero and three. You know, there's that common joke. <laughs> Europeans and uplink don't know what they're doing. It's but TCM, TCM through the season were playing very, very well yeah. at uplink. But again, at Team KD of 0 0.83, you're not going to be able to win a game of public. And they're losing by six caps too. That's not even close. That, I mean, the, the, those two game wins were blowouts. Like, they just could not win them. We saw some all. teams this weekend where it was really close games. Like, Rise had a bunch in respawn game modes that just mm -hmm. didn't go their way, whether it was CTF or it was one flag cap or something right. along those lines. But TCM just got destroyed in yeah. uplink all they, weekend long. And when, when you have that... Did in these series, Ben. Yeah, you could sneak a hard point and force a second one and then have that extra uplink, but when you just can't take respawns for life, you, and then You're not gonna when you have series. the S&Ds where you need to take those to make up for those losses right. respawn and you lose those as well, you there's a reason they went 0-2 so, so, with a 2-8 so This, this right is now. my question for you. Yeah. How much do you think the best of seven format affected them? I mean, it, and we spoke about this a lot. Where else do we see a best of seven format fully come into play in a year for some of these players? In the year of AW. Where, when have we seen it? Ever? No. Ever? So, so, so the, big, the big difference for me was, these guys, it's like, you're going from a half point S&D. So let's say you suck at respawn, but you're really good at S&D. Yeah. You can immediately get on the board, you can tie things up at one on one. Whereas yeah. here, you're playing two respawns. Like immediately, you're playing half point, then an uplink into an S&D. And they're 0-3 in the uplinks? And uh, by, by that point, your confidence is just down. You, yeah. you, you've 100% lost that map number two. And what, you went one and two in half point? Okay. And like, once again, going back to the search and destroy, a .68 team KD. Yeah, so now you're already at game three and it's gone horribly for you in some way. Right. You've, you've lost your uplink, you know that already. So just by the statistics, whether you're even looking at the scores or not, even if they won map one, they didn't win a single uplink or SND, so you already know they're down one, two going into game four. Right. And then their CTF was what, one and one? So they barely even got to play a ton of maps. Yeah. They went, they traveled all the way to Austin, Texas to play two series to be immediately knocked out. And honestly, they traveled all the way to hey, the US from Europe. But they got to see the big A. That's, that's important. That's, that's true. Um, that's important. DeSanto, some of you guys may recognize that from Europe. Uh, they do a common article known as Good Land, Bad Land. Yeah. Which is interesting. And then when I kind of came in today, you actually had a good idea, which reminded me very much of that. We're going to take a look at the weakest player on the team now. It's not just based on statistics, but in terms of their overall performance, um, Shane from TCM had a very, very rough weekend. Yeah. Uh, overall, KD is 0 0.76. Again, KD doesn't always mean anything. We went 0 0.72 versus TK in losers round number one. I mean, he was the only, what, only player on the team to go negative in CTF as well, 0 0.69? It, it just... He, wa he wasn't filling the role that TCM needed to be able to win these respawn game modes. You expect, you you, you can't not say that. I mean, Moose also so, but, had, some, uh, right. had some struggle uh, games. I'm it wasn't only well. Shane. But you you would say, all right, he's going to have a bad game because he's going for the objective, right? And you should never look at that. But you look at the amount of objective work he did. It, it didn't. I mean, what? With only 1.0 caps per game? It wasn't. It, it, you, can't, it you, can't, you can't even justify it by saying, I, exactly. went, I went double negative, but I capped full flags. We're going to go mean, over another player later on, too, who was in that same boat. Really? And yeah, and it's just, it, it was a common theme we saw this weekend where TCM, two players that were doing their job for me, absolutely. Mad Cat, mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. AR, doing exactly what we needed. We saw him light people up all weekend. Uh -huh. And then Jurd was still filling that role they needed of the hyper-aggressive SMG who was getting those caps See, in I the disagree. hill and breaking the hard point. I disagree, because you look at Jurd. Like his performance wasn't that good. I think one of one of the key players we can both really agree on, if you if you kind of look away from Shane, was Moose. His inconsistency yeah. was what was just so bad. You can't have but I, but a player like Moose going as negative as he can because re realistically, we look at this TCM team. There was only one player you can say played well, and that's Mad Cat. And when I say play well, casting that first game between um, TCM and it was who was it? Was it El who did they play first? I completely forgotten. Is it Elevate? I want to say Elevate. Elevate. It was Elevate, right? Or yeah, Elevate was fourth seed. Yeah. But casting that first game, my cup was anyone playing. It was like a 1v4 and everything. Now, when you have a player dropping nearly 50 kills. Oh, trust me. I completely agree. We can both say by far, and we'll get into that at right after right after we get finished talking about Shane, is that Mad Cat was the player for this team. Oh, you still on Shane. But yeah, yeah. But, now, but what I'm yeah, mentioning with Shane, okay. and this also goes in regard to Jurd was I think that Jurd might have struggled a little bit more because the support of his teammates that he normally would get in um, Moose as well as Shane wasn't as strong as normal. What we've seen, and you, and you have to say, what we've seen from this team is that Jurd is the one who pushes aggressive and almost at times will sacrifice himself to clear the lane for Mad Cat to just come in and break the hill with his team. As in, listen, listen, you're not no, letting you, me finish. You know that, you, okay, Jer you're, no, no, no. you're already wrong by what you just said, but... 
Jerd Jer, Jer is the hyper aggressive SMG. Right. Can we agree but Madcap Mad is slaying people just off the hill. That's what I'm saying. But he, doesn't, he doesn't break it. You'll never see Madcap. I'm not saying he's. But that's what, what you're I'm saying. saying is Jerd is the one who gets that first entry kill so Madcap right. can then see the hill, get the kills they need, and then his team comes into support and hops in the hard point. I, I disagree. Normally, what you've seen throughout the. I mean, I've cast a lot of games, but normally what you see yeah. from TCM is Madcap will slay the way for Jerd to jump on the hill. So. Madcap was doing his role. Like, we'll, we'll take a look at Madcap. Overall KD of 1.28. The highest in the entire tournament. Yes, he only played Play two series. Maps. Great. Okay, it doesn't really mean much. Yeah. But, you know, you look at the maps he did play. 1.24 versus Elevate and a 1.3 versus TK? Like, uh, he was, he was single handedly killing everything. His shot so was I, ridiculous. I, and then wait, he wasn't getting pointless kills. Like, he was getting important kills. So I look at everyone else on that team and say, you're just not doing your job. Like, you can, the argument you can make for Jerd was, okay, Moose wasn't giving him as much support as he usually gets. But I don't think you can say that Madcat and him weren't working well. I mean, at, at, at what point can you look at Madcat and say, what more can he actually do? From the games? Like, what, what, what else would you want him to do? When I was looking back at the games that were played, mm -hmm. Madcat was obviously leading in all the kills. Right. You Jerd, expect them, though. Jerd was still double digits in captures and close to 80 engagements every single game. And that's what we've seen throughout the whole season when this team was successful. Moose had a 1.05 KD through the entire season two, came to this event and wasn't even close towards what he could normally play as in regards to the kills he would get. That plays a role in the differences that it makes for their team. Instead of Jerk no, maybe I, no, having no, to break I, it no, down. No, 100% I, yeah. agree with, I, I agree with that. I just think, I just think we, we both kind of agree that this is a thing. We both right. maybe have different reasons for why we think it went I, that I way. Agree. But I, I, I truly think that Maybe when Jared only has to pick up one kill on a hard point normally, as opposed to the now two or three he's got to hop in and get right. two or three, right. and that's that's only that's very different. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very. And, and I mean, but different. Mad Cat was killing everything. So he was the only player on TCM to go positive in every single game type. Yeah, the only player to do that. Okay, and it gets worse as well when you kind of look at how bad of an event TCM had as a whole. He held the kills record on a single game at X Games with a 47 bomb versus Team Cal. <laughs> and it wasn't even like it was like 47 to 30; it was 47 and 19. 47 and 19. When I was thinking like, back, <laughs> dominant performances, yeah, we've seen like 55 and stuff, but normally those 55 per, per, like 55 kills, like 55 and 25, 55 and 27. This is like 47 and 19. They're all in their same little he legend, just, like he, legendary he performances. I, I mean, I, I spoke to him. I, let's put it into perspective. We actually have uh, a VOD for you guys. It's Elevate yeah. versus TCM. It's a solo hard point. And uh, you guys may have seen this one yesterday. We'll throw that up, but we're still going to have this conversation. This is a really big conversation, which I think needs to be highlighted a little bit more about the way that TCM were playing at the weekend. It just wasn't themselves. Yeah. It really wasn't. And it was actually kind of painful to watch at times because I, I spoke to Micah afterwards and he was actually on the analysis desk speaking to Swanee. And he was like, dude, like, what else can I do? What else can I do? Oh, exactly. It's very tough. We have the VOD here. We'll throw that one up for you. And when pointing it out, it's just, you could just see the struggles that wind up going not in their favor. Obviously, Solar Hardpoint, this is the match up against Elevate. It, I, it just, it, honestly, watching this now, it, it pains me. It, it really does. It, it actually pains me. Yeah. Because after not having them even getting to X Games, to then kind of see the X Games, I was like, all right, maybe, maybe they can have a good performance. Because you kind of, as you touched up, touched on earlier on, you, you look at it as, all right, well, what's a European team ever done in North America? Once again, it goes TCM, back to Anaheim. some strong performances at champs. Third, third, I mean, would you even say strong? I mean, I mean uh, Inferno, not, not this Inferno, champs, I'm saying in general. I mean, Inferno, Inferno placed eighth of Black Ops 2. I mean, okay, and that was Swanee yeah. with a team of three other Italians. Yeah, you can see, though, Elevate starting to Ghosts. Up a little bit. You saw, what what place did Aware get this year? Was it top? Fifth? Eighth? No, fifth was my freak. Wasn't Aware the best European team? Yeah. Which no Australia. one would have expected. Yeah. Oh, no, there was, I, I think, not a single person yeah, predicted and, you know, aware to be the top European team. It's been, a, Epsilon it's been a tough year for, for Europeans. Yeah, and, this game. and, and the, it's just it's, it's getting even tougher, I feel. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can just tell by the start of this game, Ben. Already, Shane and Moose, 3 and 10 to start things off. Yes, the score is pretty decently even, but that's only after the first hard point. What is Slack? 7 and 1 on a 6 streak right now. It just seemed like they just couldn't shut down some of these explosive players from other teams. Purely in the part that it, w it was up to Madcat to do that. Like, well, if Madcat couldn't do it, then it would just, the rest of the team look, look, at, look at Moose, 1 on 6 start. Yeah. I mean, like, come on. <laughs> and then, as I said, you know, Slack, 8 streak, 9 and 2. 
I like, mean, a you can't start off a game at X Games one and six. Yeah. Like that's just not that, not, not a good start. And, you know, we kind of highlighted as that weakest still, player or, or the team for for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. but if you, we, we could have written out moves, and I would feel just as strong. Yeah, we were we were actually arguing a bit back and forth uh, between everyone in the office between which two players really uh, let you down for TCM and. I don't think Jared was ever in the conversation, uh, but it was definitely Moose. No, I, I don't think you can have Jared. Yeah, M Moose and Moose and Shane absolutely were the two biggest letdowns. Still, at this point, Moose two and eight. You can see the early rotation already coming in for Elevate. Madcat loses that gunfight to Slack. Two more players fall, and just like that, TCM now going to have to try to break this hard point. So it, uh, it just continues to go not in their favor. All four players, negative. And when you start off a game like this, Ben, and it's the first game in a series, how do you as a team be able to bounce back when there's a respawn game mode right after? This is what you are talking about earlier. When you get completely outslayed, typically there's that barrier or buffer in the middle where, hey, it's an SD, we can slow things down. Yeah, you saw that, that's the exact argument I made actually at the X Games because we talked about it yeah. uh, on the analysis desk with Swanee, and he, and he kind of agreed as well. In a such a you slow down the game massively. Yeah. You can just make it the pace that you want to play it at. So if you've had a, a rough respawn, it's, it's fine. You can kind of forget about it and just focus on those 1v1s. Going back to back respawn, if you get trashed in map one, kind of like this, you go into map two, and it's like, all right, well, we're going into another fast paced respawn. Like, that's tough. Like, Moose right now, 3 and 11. Shane is, is trying to do everything he can, but. I, I just feel like middle Moose really just needed to step up. Feel like a broken record. Exactly oh, I mean, I mean, and it, it, that that was the big issue for this squad at the moment. And he's got zero captures. He's running that battle for his team, and I think he just went on a three streak momentarily. But so let, let me let me ask you this though. Yeah. For a team like TCM, what if I said you know potential roster change? Could you see it? Because they they've, they've guaranteed got their spot in season three. So you got to talk to that. Have team house over in North America as well. Was that uh, was it you that I was seeing? This about last week, I, I've been the biggest believer that a team change happens with this team. Really? Since last, well, it's like for a while now. Like for what we've seen from this performance, I absolutely think that it's something that could happen. I mean, we know that they're going to take a, a break for a couple of weeks now because there's that gap of time between the next event. Uh -huh. um, so I know, I think all of them or majority of them are returning home. Every, every one of them. Are. Yeah. So looking at this team, now you get a little break off, some talks between players. There's still some very eligible people that would like, like if you keep Madcat on this team and Jerd and then find either a replacement for Shane and Moose, that's a, still an appealing offer for a North American player. I mean, the, the problem with Madcat is he's a very volatile player. Like, he will not want to play with this team again. I can tell you that right now. Now, it, it, if, him, if him returning to North America with this full team, it's not going to happen. Now, what if they make a change for at least one of the players? Do you think they would stay with the other two, or does it have to be like who you pick? I mean, who, so the way I look at it is there's a couple of plays. Let's say Swanee and, and Team Epsilon don't perform well at relegation. Yeah. He's an obvious go-to kind of guy. He's played well on AW. Like, when you look at him as an individual, yeah. he's European. Everyone knows him. Like, he wants to be in America as well, so there's none of that, oh, you know, uh, I don't think I could make that transition to North America. Like, he could do it, but yeah. he kind of wants to do it. It's It just comes down to do they want to go for a player like Swanee, or potentially do they look at a North American? Because they have that, like, leak spot already. Yeah. Like, that's very valuable to a lot of these plays, but who who would you replace and who would you try and run at? Run after. Oh, and that's a tough thing too because as a player, a big thing that comes into the factor is the communication and chemistry between these teams. So now, like obviously, frustrating event. Bouncing back from this. Uh, what if one player is kind of not on the same mindset as the rest? Is that easier to quickly replace? Or do they say, you know, his skill outweighs his current mindset? You have to think of these things when going into it. Obviously, I'm not in that situation, but from what we've seen this event, I mean, do they need, could, could they find a stronger bow player over Moose from what we've what we've saw, seen, especially in this game? I mean, I feel like you could have started this game better than he did. Like, what if they get sinful over Moose? Is that something that you could wind up seeing? Do you think Sin's a better bow player than Moose? I'm just throwing out a, I mean, I'm just throwing out a name of a player who's open, who's uh, eligible at the moment. You know what I'm saying? But then we know WrestleMania is coming. I think WrestleMania is going to start today. I really do. Really? Yeah. Already? Yep. Already. I think it's going to start, and I think you're going to see a couple of announcements today. Um, but for me, I, I would just go after someone that you know that's going to work. The big issue that I have, and I know this from my time at Curse when I was trying to put uh, a Call of Duty team together, I wanted to mix a couple of Europeans with a couple of North Americans. Yeah. Communication is a massive problem. Which sounds ridiculous, right? Because like, well, we all speak the same language, English. It sounds different. 
If you've ever listened to Madcap talk, or if you watch the X Games and you know when we went to a listen in, the accent it's a very, very rough accent. Yeah. Very difficult to understand. And North Americans kind of sit there and they kind of laugh at it a little bit, like if you're having a casual conversation. But if you imagine trying to communicate thoroughly in a game, yeah. Like if you're not used to that. Well, that's one thing I learned when I when I went to London for the Gfinity event. Right. Yeah. Like, you experienced yourself. Finally, like Rail and Momo and them were explaining me the different types of just British accents there were that you hear. And some of them are way tougher to hear than uh, understand like than others. Swanee has a pretty rough accent as well, but he kind of keeps control of it. And he's Swanee. And he keeps, yeah, he keeps it elegant. Uh, but <laughs> he keeps it elegant. That's the word to describe Swanee. Yeah, I, I would love to see what the chat thinks, well, especially while these games are going on. Let us know your thoughts. TCM, who, if they make a team change, who should they drop? Who would be a good fit for this team? What role right do you think they really need to fill? All sorts of stuff to uh, look right into right now. And still in this game, Ben, the thing we wanted to point out, especially with this game right type, Christ, yeah, is this was a close game. This was extremely through. close. And if you think about it, it comes back down to the point of if Moose and Shane, especially Moose in this game, is playing to the best of his abilities, that's a lot of extra time your team gets when it, when it ends within 15 seconds of each other. Right, the, the final score of this game is 200 to 187. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, win this one. Hey, yeah. All right, and this, this is the team which placed bronze at the event. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a good-ass team. Like, for me, this whole series is kind of like, oh, Madcap versus Temp. We'll see who kind of wins that battle. Look at Temp. How many times have you seen Temp get shut down completely? He's 26 and 23, as opposed to Madcap, who's 34 and 25. Madcap is quite literally opening up the map for his SMGs, and they just are not performing well. And one thing I do want to point out, too, is that Moose, right now, at the full two-minute mark, was 20 and 27. And the teams were 10 seconds split between each other. He finishes this game, if I'm not mistaken, 31 or 21 and 35. So in the last two and a half minutes, are you serious? He gets one kill and nine deaths at the end of this game. There's no way that's right. I, I, I think that's entirely right. He's still only at 20 kills, and it's been a full minute and 15 seconds. So you think for the last three minutes he only gets one kill? For the last two and a half minutes, he only gets one kill, and they kept it within 15 seconds. That shows like how big of a difference he made. Imagine if he picks up some kills. You know what I'm saying? Like, Pick up one kill. Yeah. One like, kill in the hot point. There. Now he's 21 to 30. So let's keep an eye on that. The final minute of the game. He's got one kill now since the two and a half minute mark. Dude, that's absurd. Yeah. Like, like that's just that's not even like bad. That's completely shutting down as a player. That's losing full composure. Yeah. Like there, he just felt he just died again. 40 seconds remaining. Still 21 to 32. So. And again, it's, it's not like his his teammates have stopped killing him. I mean, my guy's about to get what nearly 40 kills. He's at 39. But watch. This. The funny thing is, too, is that this game ends 200 to 187. So in these last 30 seconds, they they mount uh, a little bit of a comeback. So imagine. I mean, the game, the game was mathematically over. That's something. Oh you yeah. Kind of bear in mind. But but, but just think of just think of the parking lot hard point, the hill right before this. Right. If Moose gets some kills in that hill. Now maybe Madcap's able Christ, to slay a little right. more. He, he got one kill in two in and two and a half, half minutes of play. He finishes the game 21 and 35. Jack, normally I roast you, but I'm thoroughly convinced I could have put you in in the game, and you probably would have performed better than that. Thanks, man. I mean, Shane and Jert are actually on fire. I don't know if I should take this compliment or that was that was, that was bad. And 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 you might be thinking, well, now that we're doing these team highlights. Why are we maybe showing a loss here? Well, the teams that struggled, were, that's what we're doing today. Right. We're recapping yeah. what went wrong. There's a roster mini coming up, and there's a reason for it. We're not sugarcoating, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, Matt he did, really, did well. really well. Like, let's show this game of him. No. Right. They struggled, especially there from Moose. The last two and a half minutes, one kill. That is absolutely game-changing when your team only loses by 13 seconds. You're basically in a 3v4. You're just an extra body. You're speechless. I'm so glad that you pointed that out because I honestly yeah, that's something I wish I'd realized while casting. Cause that that is again, that's against a team which plays bronze. Yeah. How different that bracket could have been if Moose turned up. I don't know. Anyway, that was a look at TCM. 0 2 record, 2 and 8 map count, didn't play very well at all. For now, we're going to head to a quick commercial break. When we return, we're going to take a look at another team who didn't play that well this weekend. It's going to be Team Envious. Right back.